Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, glad to have you guys here on this Thursday, the 20th of August, 2020. Welcome. Now listen, I'm going to tell you guys what. This is the last days of capitalism. You know, if you go back to the Roman Empire, during the collapse of the Roman Empire, things were totally different back then. Most of those people that were citizens of Rome, you know, they didn't rely upon an electronic system and uh, an agricultural system like we have now that's all controlled by the electronic system. Basically, uh, big, big agro, big agriculture is like these big farms and everything where they produce all the food for the masses. And the masses don't know how to produce food. Back in the days of the Roman Empire, most of the citizens of Rome, you know, lived in a different manner. They, they knew how to produce food for themselves. And out in the country, there's lots of small farms and stuff, you know. So uh, it's a totally different situation when, of the collapse of Rome. But we're facing a similar kind of situation, the collapse of capitalism right now. And you know what capitalism's like? You ever seen those posters of a, of a fish swallowing another fish swallowing another fish? This is like the evolutionary process, you know, of, of, of selective, what they call... Uh, so, uh, survival of the fittest. You know, now I'm not a believer in evolution, but I do believe that there is that survival of the fittest out there. And it's very much a testosterone driven policy. It's like, there's no, it's absolutely merciless. It's, it's, uh, it's cutthroat. It's, I could use so many different words to describe it, to try to describe how uh, sadistic it is. How, And th this is what the way the system is run and driven. All the way back, you know, I mean, this is the reason why there's all these wars throughout history. And we're moving down to this time where there's, there's, there's no love amongst men. And also, the way the system, the capitalist system is structured is it slowly moves toward one being the biggest, most powerful entity that swallowed all the other fish. There's nothing left. And that one entity is left would have to maintain power through a system that resembles the novel 1984, a dystopic type society that has complete control over every citizen. That's ultimately what happens. You know, with a male-dominated, testosterone-dominated system like that. Uh, I mean, let's take a look at the people involved. You know, men that are out there that are so rich that they couldn't spend the money that they have in a hundred lifetimes. And, you know, they get to be like 80 years old, 70 years old, 90 years old, or whatever. And they're interested only in making more money and stepping on whoever they have to step on to get it. Well, what do they think is going to happen in the end? Do they think they're going to be able to take it with them? This is a Monopoly board. But instead of playing Monopoly like a bunch of kids that are that are uh, very... Uh, they play a cutthroat game of Monopoly. They play Monopoly to crush all of their opponents out of existence. This kind of dystopic world that they create, they want to, they don't want to create a dystopic world, but this is what they generate with the type of society and the way the society is structured from the ground up. It's structured as a patriarchy. And, you know, we've been running this way uh, for thousands of years now. And you see where it's got us. Untold death, suffering, uh, and now we're in the nuclear age where we could quite literally be nothing left on the earth except snakes and scorpions with this kind of a policy. We need a monumental change to the world so that we're not structured in, in that kind of a way to begin with. You know, you look at the, the uh, look at politics itself. And what the percentage is, uh, the demographic of, of males to female constituencies within politics. You know, how many, and, and overwhelmingly it's dominated by males. But if you take a look at a male, 
uh, take a look seriously. All the way through history, going back to the time when we lived in, in under little wooden shelters and in caves and stuff like that, and we were we roamed and we gathered food. That particular structure of the male was very dominant and important. Otherwise, we wouldn't have food, you know. But when we start to move into a structured society that's that's a civilization. Uh, it should be structured in a way that supports the people, not just having a representative of the people who can be bought off by the big banks and by the big corporations and by capitalism to do their bidding, but structured in a way so that, so that the people have a say in the day-to-day -day affairs and that the system actually looks out for the people. And this is more of a nurturing type of a system, more of a nurturing type of a government, rather than a government that just wants to crush and dominate and turn us into a 1984 novel, where we only support them by being dominated and crushed, uh, uh, crushed right out of existence. And look at what we're going through. You have no certainty for your children right now. Uh, you're living in a time where, where you barely get any sleep at night because you don't know what's going to happen next. You have no security. This is what this system has wrought us. And it's what it's brought us to. It's right the position that we're in right now. And the Fed, well, guess what, guys? The Fed now, you know, is they're, they're neither here nor there. They're not going in, and the government is, is deadlocked on whether they should put new stimulus out and stuff. But, you know, the people out there, they need it now. They don't need it five years from now. So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. We are within five years, within five years, of a event that's going to be so earth-shaking we're either going to make it through to the other side as a species or we're going to disappear. And if we do make it to the other side as a species, we're going to look back at this period in time and we're going to realize the things that I've been saying. And we will form a, some sort of a new government that listens to the people, does what the people wants them to do. And the representatives, the reason why the representatives are going to be that way is, is because they're going to look back at this period in history and they're going to remember what happened. To the previous representatives who didn't listen to the people. And it's going to be a marker in history. And we're within five years of this event occurring. Uh, now, it could happen tomorrow. If these representatives of the people out there don't listen to the people and they continue to withhold what the people need so that they can become fatter and richer. And when they do stimulus, most of it goes to them rather than to the people. We can have this event right away. If they want to cut off stimulus and they want to be tight and stingy with the money, we can have this event pretty much right away. It's ready. Because the system is ready. There's millions of people out there. And the proverbial, you know what, is going to hit the fan. If they don't put the money out there to support the people. Now, if they want to put the money out there to support the people, we can delay it. The hyperinflation will bring it a few years from now maybe two, maybe three more years from now. If they want to really, if they really do a good job, they might be able to push it off for five more years. You know? But eventually we're going to get there, guys. And it's not going to be pretty. We're going to go through this event. But on the other side of this event, if we make it through, the world is going to be a better place. You know, I say if we make it through. And, you know, a lot of that depends upon just exactly how it plays out. We're living in very, very uncertain times. I've never seen such a, a more dangerous period in time in the, in the in ever since I've been alive. I've never seen anything like this.
And, you know, for a lot of people out there, they say, what danger? We don't see any danger. Well, you're not realizing exactly what's happening here. How the system is contracting right now in real time. Meanwhile, all this money they've generated has been pumping into Wall Street and everything and supporting the financial end of the system to a certain degree. I mean, right now it's, it's plateaued. You got to keep that support going if you want even Wall Street. But Main Street right now is going to start to shrivel up and shrink right now into, into nothingness. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I could go on and on about this, but I mean, it's just... We're facing a hyperinflation, guys, or a deflation, depending on which way they want to play it. It's up to them. If they want to play the deflation and let it go and let it get out of control, then we'll have this crisis very, very soon, within the next few months. If they want to play the inflation and they want to push the money out there, Instead of having a roadblock like they have right now with the Fed, these latest Fed minutes, you know. Wishy-washy. The market's sensing it. The market's not going up any longer. It's almost like the Fed can't make up their mind which way they want to turn. It's almost like the government right now can't make up its mind which way it wants to turn. So, I got a question for you. You want the crisis right away or you want to put it off for three or four more years? Up, up to you guys. You know, but if you have it right away, it's going to be deflationary. And if you let that deflation run away, I'll, I'll give you an example of what it's like right now. It's like a guy that's on a car and got a car on a hill. You know, he's parked his car near the top of the hill. Okay. And he didn't put the emergency brake on. Stepped out away from this car to do something, tie his shoelaces or whatever, right? He looks back and the car's rolling. You know... The quicker he can run to that car before the car gains momentum, the better. Because once it gains too much momentum, it's going to be awfully hard to stop it at that point in time. On one of my videos, I had that happen to me. <laughs> that long ago, a year or two ago. I put it on one of my videos. My truck ran down the hill. <laughs> and I had to run in and jump behind the wheel. Slam on the brake. But here's the thing. Uh... This is momentum it gains. So if they let the system start to deflate right now, it's going to start gaining momentum, gaining traction into this deflation. And the longer they wait to come in with stimulus, the more stimulus it's going to take to pull it up out of this deflationary event. It's starting now. And if they don't support it at some time, if they let it run too far away, they won't be able to stop it. It'll be like the runaway vehicle. It'll have gained too much momentum. It'll be going too fast, the deflation. They won't be able to stop it with any amount of money if they let it go too far. So right now, we're in a situation, like the Fed's in a situation where the car's at the top of the hill. They didn't put the emergency brake on, and it's just starting to roll down the hill. They could run in right now and throw a bunch of money in there on this thing, and they could stop it again. But you know it's going to take ever-increasing amounts of money, and this is why I tell you guys, we only got three or four, maybe five years left at the most. Because even if they do run in right now, put the emergency brake on, throw the money into the system right now, and not let it gain too much momentum, then what will happen is, is they'll be able to continue doing that in this exponential curve for the next two or three, maybe five years at the most, before finally a hyperinflation will tear the system to ribbons. But this system's going down. It's going down one of two ways, and they can take their choice now or later. That's it. There's no more. End of story. The system's going down. And, you know, we're not equipped. The people out there are not equipped to take care of themselves if the system goes down and cracks up and there's, and, and there's nothing working. In other words, the farms are all, big, big agriculture all just basically comes to a stop worldwide. Uh, everything just comes to a stop because it all runs on money. And if the money completely hyperinflates, then there's going to be a transition occur at the end of the hyperinflation. 
And that transition is going to be a wealth transfer. Right now, all the wealth in the world is stored in fiat currencies. You say, what's my house worth? It's worth so many dollars, of course. All the wealth is stored in fiat currencies. There will be a wealth transfer like the world's never seen before, and that is the crisis. The crisis is the wealth transfer. And at a maximum, we have five years until it occurs before the wealth transfer. Now, that's the hyperinflationary way. The deflationary way is even worse. If they want to go the deflationary route, then we can have the crisis right away. And it can run away on them. And once deflation gets too far gone, I can't tell you, every day that goes by, it's going to take massive amounts more money to pull it up out of that hole. It's ready to fall down into that spiraling abyss of deflation. And we're already partway there. Main Street, as I mean, Main Street's been swirling down the toilet hole of deflation. And we're almost there. The world is a total wreck. And this is where testosterone has got us. We need a world that's run in a caring way. Where the government's accountable to the citizens. And the people make the choices, not through, not so much through through a, a representative that can be bought off by the politician, political structure, but people that are actually accountable, so that the people make the choices of what what's going to happen to them. The way it is right now, we just open up the paper and there's some big new law that they've made up that. We didn't even see coming or we weren't even asked about and we didn't even know about. And then they'll tell you, hey, you know what? Ignorance is a law is no excuse. Bow down to our knee. Let us put our foot on the back of your neck. Because that's where their foot is. And they're running the system into the ground. And so that now you don't have any security for yourself or your children. You have sleepless nights, night after night after night. And you know what? I'm going to tell you guys what. I'm proud to be on your side of the fence. Because I have sleepless nights now. By these political structure who doesn't give a darn about the people. And who just basically make all of these laws and expect us to follow them uh, to the letter. And when, when what do we have? We're having less and less and less for us. And more and more and more for them. This is an unfair, unjust system that's being run. I better move into the markets. Let's open up the charts right here. Take a look at the gold price today. 1948. It's up $20 on the day. Silver price today. 2720. And it's up 2% today so far. But right now it seems to be kind of falling off some. Uh, I don't think the gold and silver price are going too much of anywhere. They perform well in, in inflation and they perform well in deflation. And as the crisis starts to get worse and worse, uh, people are going to uh, flock to safe haven assets. This crisis is not going anywhere. This crisis is going to get worse and worse. Uh, and, and I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to peak depending on which way it goes. If it's deflation, it's going to peak much sooner. And if it's inflation they're going to be able to buy a few more years perhaps as much as five more years if it's inflation uh i think they're going to take the inflationary route i think they just stalled the in inflation train for a few days or weeks because i think that the situation is going to start to unfold and they're going to see the system start to crack and then they're going to rush in with more money i think they're going to pick inflation and so uh, that's the direction I think it's going to move in, which will buy us as much as three to five more years. And if they choose the inflation route and they want to pump enough money into the system, we could even have a real economic recovery in that next five years. That'll feel good, you know, before we finally hit the wall, uh, maybe in three to five more years from now, you know. So that's probably the route they're going to choose. And... Uh, but the choice is theirs. Make no mistake about it. It's all got to do with how much how much willingness do they have to turn on the printer. If they don't turn on the printer, they are going to be 
in trouble a lot sooner than later. If they do turn on the printer, maybe they can look like heroes for a couple years before it finally cracks up anyway. Either way, it's going down, you know. And so ultimately, five years is not a long period in time, but it would give you a bit more time to prepare. Uh, and how you want to prepare yourself for this is you want to think rural. You want to think my nearest neighbor is at least a mile away. You want to think secluded piece of property. You want to think a piece of property that, that you can put a big high fence around the thing. This is what you want to think. You want to think barbed wire. That's what you want to think. You know, uh, and, and you want to have food stored away for yourself. Uh, you want to have water stored away for yourself. You don't want to be reliant on the system. You want to be off-grid in, in a very rural location and away from other people. Uh, and perhaps when the system melts down, perhaps you won't have any intruders. Uh, perhaps you'll be far enough away where they don't feel like walking that far to get to where you are. And when they get to where you are, they're going to be met with a big fence. There may be a security dog, you know that you keep for yourself. Doesn't have to be an actual security security dog, but just, you know, a, a big dog that'll protect your property, you know. And th this, the people that's going to make out best are the people that have those those particular conditions or criteria met. The people that are going to wake out the worst are the people in the urban areas, the people in the, the central city areas and places like that. Because when the when the system cracks up, there's going to be a period where it needs to be restructured, you know, the whole system's going to be need, need to be restructured. And in a way that is not like it is now, with a dog-eat-dog -dog type of system. A system that allows for a healthy, vibrant middle class, rather than a system that crushes everybody that's not super rich. Anyway, you know, you can see I feel like ranting this morning. But... This is the way it is, guys. Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's up 13 points on the day. 27,706. Uh, crude oil, 4247 today. U.S. Treasuries. Well, we're looking at the short end. We've got one yield rising, but most of them are all falling. Uh, as much as 4.4 basis points. Uh, 2.9 basis points on the 10-year. And the 10 years at 0.64. And the U.S. 30 years, 1.37, and it's fell 3.9 basis points. U.S. dollar today, 27, uh, 92.76. Sorry, I don't know. My brain just went into a blip. Blip, blip. <laughs> 92.76. It's down 13 cents on the day. 13% of a, of a penny on the day. It's down 0.14%. 92.76. So the dollar's falling off. Overall, looking at it across the board uh, today, it's down. It's down some. Uh, listen, guys, thank you for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.